Numbers chapter 7, verse 9. To the sons of Kohath he gave none, because theirs was the service of the holy things which they carried on their shoulders. Why did they put it in a cart? Why did we get hung up on big screens, fog machines, and skinny jeans? And think that God would bless that. You know what I'm telling you is the important thing? Is tonight, this convention, these leaders are relying not on tricks or impressing modern audiences because we know that the anointing still breaks the yoke. You need to shout right now. It's the anointing. David finally realized a man died because of my negligence. Being a preacher is not an easy thing. Being a fake preacher is a lot easier until you have to pay the price. And you will. The Bible says of the man or the woman of God to whom much is given, much is required. Now listen to me. David studied, he wanted the ark. He wanted it to come back. It killed him that the ark wasn't in Israel. And so he studied and he realized I was at fault. A man's life was taken because these priests became familiar with God and familiar with the ark and began to handle the holy things. Like, hey, long before the cart, there was a problem. Hey, we're going to go in that house and grab it. We're going to party and make a bunch of noise, but we are not thinking of the holiness behind this event, the sacredness of it. You know, my name is Mario Murillo, and what I do is I put up a tent, and I get alone with God in the afternoon. My staff will tell you, you can't talk to Mario between certain hours because he's in a room being defeated by God, being with God getting the victory over his flesh and his desires and his agenda. You know why? Because that night, somebody's going to get up out of a wheelchair. Tonight, a blind eye is going to open. A cancer is going to vanish. Somebody that's addicted to drugs is going to get free. An alcoholic's going to go home saved in one step instead of 12. How many of you want the anointing in your church? Yes. So in 1 Chronicles 15, starting at verse 13, David tells how the cow ate the cabbage. That's how we say it in Texas. For because you did not do it the first time, the Lord broke out against us because we did not consult him about the proper order. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord of Israel and the children of the Levites bore the ark on their shoulders by its poles as Moses had commanded according to the word of God. You know, do you think that David fell with Bathsheba because he saw her once? The Bible says he stayed home when all the kings went off to war. He even wrote about how he had lost his heart for war. Preachers become famous. Their books sell. People invite them. And then they become a part of it. I'm feeling it right now. The devil is trying to use certain famous Christian leaders to say, Mario, you need to preach at this and you need to preach at that. And God said, you come off the front line and I will remove my anointing from you. You are not the darling of the spirit-filled movement. You don't belong at every event. You're not a part of everything that's going on. A pastor will call me and say, how do we do what you do? I said, I know you're off already because you don't look at another man. You don't tune a piano with another piano. 
You have to have a vertical connection to God. And Mario Murillo is not for sale. I'm an untouchable. I've got a heart for war. And I'm going to get the addicts saved. And I'm going to get the gang saved. And I'm going to keep going up and down Highway 99 until every devil knows that California is not going to be a communist nation with perverted education, but it's going to be for the glory of God. Somebody help me. You see, Uzzah did not die because it was God's first strike. It was the last straw. It's the last straw. I love Jim Franklin so much that I'm going to talk to him tonight through this sermon. And I'm talking to other pastors of large churches who are on Highway 99. Because I feel a, a, a warning. A warning. Samson had gone out without God's anointing and miracles still happen. We think that when he was with Delilah and she cut his hair, that he lost his anointing. No, it happened long before that. It happened while he still had long hair, while he still could pick up heavy weights, while he could still kill many men. There's this twilight zone that preachers don't realize that the very grace of God will allow you to function even when you're in adultery, even when you're in sin, even when you're preaching sloppy grace or something else. There'll be this, this, this moment Terry lapse where it seems like God got away with some. What destroyed Samson was not that he let her cut his hair, but that he had repeatedly assumed that the anointing would always be with him no matter what he did. And it said in Judges 16, verse 20, she said, Delilah said to him, the Philistines are upon you. Samson, and he woke up out of his sleep and said, I will go out as I have time after time and shake myself free. Samson did not know that the Lord had departed from him. He did not just know that God had departed. He didn't know when God had departed. And you, pastor, in it for the money, in it for the fame, in it for the prestige. And I'm going to tell you a little thing about the mafia. They have what they call a conciliari. He's a counselor. And back in the day when the mafia was strong, they had two kinds, a peacetime conciliari and a wartime conciliari. And when they were at war, they would never allow a peacetime counselor to make their decision. You know what we're in now? Every pastor in America is a wartime pastor now. I'm going to say it again. Every pastor in America is now a wartime pastor. <laughs> 